Hello and welcome to Humankind's Lucy Open Dev. My name is Jeff Spock. I'm the narrative director of the studio here with my confinement hairdo to thank you for joining us on our continuing 10-year journey of co-creation and co-development with our community. This open dev scenario was designed by the dev team to get feedback on specific features of the game. Obviously, Humankind is a much bigger game than what you're going to see here. So please note that this scenario does not represent the final game content or quality because we're still working on it. Now, Humankind is all about creating your own unique civilization by combining cultures over the course of human history. For this scenario, you will start in the Neolithic Age and will be able to play through the first four ages, offering more than 10,000 potential culture combinations to create your own unique civilization. You can play the scenario as often as you want until December 28th. We encourage you to try lots of different combinations and see how much fame you can score. After you've played the scenario, we'll ask you for responses to a series of questions that our game designers have put together so you can help us make Humankind the best historical strategy game. So, we're looking forward to hearing from you. We hope you enjoy playing the game. Together, let's see how far we can push Humankind. Grüezi and welcome to a brand new game, Humankind. Humankind is, as you might have guessed from the intro of uh, Jeff there, is a open dev kind of game right now. So it's probably late alpha, as you would call it. And uh, yeah, if you pre-order the game right now, you can play it until the 28th of December. So be sure to check that out. Um, so we're going to play the first four ages and we're gonna start as Lucy. Um, as far as I got, we will be able to customize the avatar here. And we can also look here. There's a favorite, uh, favorite famous uh, streamers that have their own portraits and you can unlock them by going and watching them, which I have unfortunately not gotten yet. So yeah, let's just dive in. I have tried a few turns already and I didn't notice that there was a difficulty. So casual was really easy. And I think I'm gonna go for serious just to get some kind of challenge out of this. And yes, I know that the AI is still in development and the AI is gonna be in development probably very late into the game because you have to get all the functions ready first before you get an AI that is actually capable at anything. So let's get started. And here we are. So we start the game with a single unit here that is a tribe that can gather food. Now we can gather food by slaying animals or gather curiosities. This, for example, is a food related curiosity. While we also have these knowledge curiosities that can increase the knowledge of our tribe. And I think, yeah, you get stars for that and fame, of course, as well. Um, so what I'm going to do is I will try to get new tribes people in order to split off and discover as much as I can and then get started with uh, settling. So first, of course, I'm going to go for the food one in order to get a second tribes person as quickly as possible. Okay, that was only five new food. And uh, yeah, that was some... What is that? fire I guess we found fire okay so I want to go up here to get the other curiosity just so we have it afterwards not that somebody else takes it away from me all right let's go there <clears throat> slaying animals is a very great way to get food although these guys are gonna be too strong for me for now um, but there is a sanctuary here which is basically a place where wild animals, animals spawn from and you can loot those for quite a lot of food. We have now discovered something valuable. We got two knowledge points for... also looks like a fire. So if we get enough of that, we can actually settle. We see that we got some influence from that and to create an outpost to, create, uh, to claim a territory we need five influence. We could basically do that already, and I think it might not even that be that bad of an option to just, like, go close to this. Actually, this might be a very good place to start, like, somewhere... 
These borders are weird. Down here, the savanna, maybe? Or on the river up here? Probably better. This mountain will probably not count because it's outside of the territory. But, uh, yeah, we might still get something useful from that. Or go here. One second. Um... I probably can just do this and see what I get. Yeah, 15 food and 8 production is not even that bad. It would be a bit more on this side, so maybe we'll do that. Um, let's see, if we went down here, it's going to be way worse. It's probably going to be difficult to grow the city here. But I think I will do this outpost straight away. Also, uh, I don't know why it doesn't show the the counter anymore but yeah we still need more food for another tribes person so we will go there and right. make ourselves an outpost oh this region has uh copper that's nice so let's put down an outpost right here this just used up their movement but they can now continue so i will just go up there gather this other curiosity um or should i get here it's gonna take three turns this is also three turns. Let's go here first. It's going to get us more food. And then we can... Oh, this food curiosity is also back. Maybe we can get there? No. Not in one turn, at least. If the, the animal moves, we should be able to get that, though. Come on. Walk away. Thank you. Come on. There we go. <clears throat> it's a peaceful animal. We can try to kill that now. So we got another, I guess, five food. Yeah, let's kill that. We need to make sure that it doesn't have the high ground because that would be bad. I think like this is all right and we can just defend. Because although I could just do that because it's standing in the river, so it's going to be weaker. Yeah, that's fine. And it attacked us from the bottom, so it lost a lot of things. We even got some um, influence for that. That's nice. So we could spend that to just found another outpost here. And as you can see, we now have two tribes people. That means I can split them off afterwards. And we have an event, a solve for the bloodied. The battle is over, the tribe still alive, and most are still able to enjoy the warm caress of the midday sun and the cold bite of the morning frost. Yet you didn't come out of the encounter wholly unscathed. Several of the tribe ca carry nasty wounds. None more so than one of the young fighters you are most fond of. Deep in slumber, blood oozes from, the, from a deep gash to her neck. Such wounds usually end in death, but one of the elder's followers thinks he can heal her by applying a poultice of tree bark and plant leaf. What do you say? So this is uh, one of the events that you can get, and this is, I think, scripted for now to always happen after the first fight. I can either treat the, the wounds or dismiss and pray, and last time, I t uh, last time I tried, I treated and I got a dead person that I think didn't really do anything. And I think I'm going to try that again. I think you should always try to treat people. So, can we make an outpost here? We need 50 influence. Okay. It racks up qu pretty quickly then. But, I mean, having that already is quite nice. I do want to get more uh, stars before I really, like, settle settle down and I want to be able to explore more so next turn when we have movement I'm gonna split off my guys here so that I can do some more watch the button here right. so you will try to get that sanctuary and I guess with you I will go for more discoveries and there we have a food one nice wild berries Perfect. So they will get... Actually, they can get the food one first as well here. I wonder what happens when we have those two like combine again, whether we will still get a another person out of that. Uh, the outpost is done in one turn. And we, couldn't, we can actually make a unit here. Nice. But it will reduce the population of the outpost. We can also relocate the outpost if we wanted to. Which I don't know how strong that is. Also, we should probably attack this deer. Because I think that's give, gonna give us more food. Together. Let's do that. 
please stand in the water? It even stands downstairs. That's sad for it. It's gonna be weaker there. Thank you. That was 10 food. And also 10 influence. Nice. We also already start to get, the, get influence passively, I guess, from here. Yeah. Cultural influence. So after that, we're gonna go for the curiosity and then the sanctuary. And with you guys, I think I'm gonna go like to the right here, maybe. There is a knowledge one. We now have 50 influence, so we can claim another region. This one seems to be quite big. It goes all the way down here. So I guess those guys, after they're done with the sanctuary, will go up there to claim the territory with the copper, because it's going to be quite nice and important, I think. So given that, that they are going to go back up there, I think I will just continue in this direction with those guys. Yeah, sounds nice. An animal lair, I know that. Ooh, don't move in my path. Why is it injured? I think I can take this. Let's try. So, I mean, I can try this because then we still have the high ground. That should work. Ouch. Okay, but we did manage. We lost quite some health here. But that's 40 food. That's like two people, right? Yep, we have three now. Also, we got some, some stars and stuff. So we managed uh, this kind of quest thing where we have to hunt three animals. That gave us an era star. I think that allows us to pick a culture here. I'm going to go over that a little bit later, though. We also have uh, five populations. We have one here as a settler, and we have four units. So that counts as five populations. I do still want to get 10 knowledge, so gathering those things up will be nice. And actually, we will be able to split those guys up in a second. Um, but in this phase, you can get so many people already. Also, let's see here. There's more food to be found. And an animal to be killed. No, I don't want to enter a new error just now. Come on, attack it. I think I can't fight over this ledge. It's a bit high, but I think if I deploy here, it should be alright. Ooh, they went up there. But that's still not a problem. I can still fight downhill. You should always try to fight downhill. Okay, that's easy. So we should also have two people now. That's nice. After that, we're probably going to go there. Ooh, horses. Pretty nice. So, uh, I guess just next turn then. This is what? Aerostar. Uh, that was, I guess, the growth one. So we have... It's weird that it only shows one. Two of three. The thing is... Those stars, they will not really matter. The only thing that matters is the fame you get from each star. So those two are already completed. That gave us 20 fame each. And doing knowledge here would give us another 20. The question is, though, should I really go for it? Because at this stage, I'm not even sure. I mean, we have two that we see. That's probably going to be two points each. So we're going to be at eight. Yeah, I think we can do this. I didn't do this last time, and I think I didn't even do the, the Hunter one. Um, but it's really so easy to get. And we're at turn 7, I don't think we really lose out on, on stuff. What is the case, though, is the longer you wait, uh, the less of these factions or, or cultures you might be able to choose from, since the first uh, people to advance can choose first. So they can just steal the one that you might want have wanted to get. So, um, should I split those guys up? Against the Mammoth, it's usually better to have two people, but do I really need that? So, first of all, uh, let's take a, a healthy one for going alone. You go here. I should have split it into the river. Well, whatever. Um, you go up there. Also to make another outpost, because I do have the influence for that now. And let's see here. There's still food to be found. 
and there's still a sanctuary to plunder. Um, but maybe those guys can do that. Let's get down here. That's a very lush area. It's nice. So let's take one of you guys down there. You get that, and then you go for the sanctuary. And you guys, uh, maybe let's go to the horse area, because getting horses would be important for riders. Uh, any more that I have not moved yet? I think not. I did not get enough of those, though. This was just one star, or one point. I think I will go for the sanctuary, go for uh, this one here, and then I'm gonna take my culture. I don't want to wait for too long. So you go ahead and go there. Ooh, a mammoth. Wouldn't wanna let that just be here. Alright, I think that's nice. There's also more food over there. Yep, we're gonna battle and you're gonna come up here. I'll always stand on the mountain. And we were going to let it come to us. That's a bit unfortunate because that means I can't really do anything there. Uh, this is not going to kill it, right? I mean, there's a potential for it to be killed. Let's move this one over. I think there's an adjacency bonus of some sort. Yeah, it didn't got quite kill it. Yay, there we go. That should have gotten us another two units and 40 influence. Nice. So, those guys should go and plunder. Ransack the sanctuary for more food. We're gonna get 10 food in one turn. Uh, you guys are full, so you're gonna be split up fairly soon. Although, I will just uh, continue next turn. We also have still one idle unit. <clears throat> so, I think I'm gonna settle in this area. It has horses, and I think... Like somewhere right here. 17 and 6. And not much production. Ooh, there's also science. I think here might not be bad. That's 14, 6, 3. I don't think we get more than 6 production out of this anyway. Um, but yeah, this looks pretty good. Let's make an outpost here. We will have to decide where we want our capital to be. Also, I think this region where those guys are standing in is unclaimed for the moment, so we'll see. Um, what I did last time is I had a city and kind of surrounded all the regions with a... Well, we'll, we'll come to that point. I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself here. All right, you guys can't move yet. We need to dis decide on an event. A soul for the bloody event too. The elder prepared the poultice and applied it to the gash. For the first few days, little change could be seen in the wounded fighter. Her face pale, her body feverish, but come the fifth day, her eyes opened and you knew she would survive. It is a happy day. Rebirth. Nature's rich offer. So we just get uh, calendar research costs reduced by 25%. I guess that was lucky because last time I didn't get that. Oh, right. Next turn. Okay. With that done, I think... Can we do another outpost here? Wow, look at that. That's not much food, though. 18 production. Yeah, maybe something like that. It's a bit more neutral. Where's the science coming from? Ah, oh, from the iron. Never mind, then. 915. I think 915 is probably the best we're going to get. So, yeah, 70 influence. Still quite a lot, but I think it's nice. Do we need influence to take a culture? Go away here. Uh, doesn't look like it. <clears throat> so, anything else that I want to move before we do that? So, those guys are full on food, it seems. Like, there's just not much I can get more here. Um, you have only 5. You would benefit from an additional 15, but I don't think this is going to happen. So, yeah, I think it's just going to be time to pick our culture. So let's do that. 
Um, let's look at the terrain first of all. We have mountainous regions with rivers. We have a mixed region with rivers and we have more rivers. So something on the rivers might actually be a good idea. Um, apart from that, I don't really know what else there is. So let's have a look here. These guys are, I think, expansionists. And you're about movement speed, buyout, fortification, common strength. I do not want to go for combat so early on. So I think they're not going to be anything interesting to me. Zoo, if I pronounce it correctly. Stability on district. So generally, you we are going to be able to build districts, and they will have minus 5 stability. So a plus 2 is going to reduce that negative to minus 3, if I understand it correctly. As you can see here, this is a, a district that's minus 5, but will get plus 2. So... Yeah, this is going to be very science focused. Per religion and adjacent mountain. We don't really have mountains all that much, so I don't think this is going to be a good choice here. Um, let's see here. Phoenicians. I guess they will need water, right? Constructibles buyout cost by 20% is not even that bad. It's very money, money focused. Coastal water, adjacent lake. We'd have neither of those. So probably also not the best thing to pick here. Yeah, with a naval unit. Can't really use that. Then we have the Olmecs. Um, influence on territory. Not bad. Faith, food, and faith per river. You know what? That sounds actually pretty great. Let's... let's oops, 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 oops. Let's keep that in mind. Olmecs sound pretty nice. Why this this scrolling is driving me nuts. When I scroll down or up, it just goes left and right, which I mean can be useful, but you know, there was in some of those there is also like vertical scrolling, so that messed me up <laughs> multiple times already. And javelin throwers, I like javelins. I don't know why, I just like them. Nubians, um money and luxury, money and strategic, quite a lot of money actually, and uh, faith. Adjacent maker's quarters, so this is like industrial quarters. Trader slot. I've never seen traders. And a special like archer. Um, you know, not bad. We can definitely make that work. We don't have that many strategic or elite luxuries. But why not, you know? So these are a military civilization, so I guess I'm not going to go for it. Um, unit production. Yeah, I don't think so. These are also military ones, so again, not that interested in them. Oh, God. But a really strong unit. Look at that, 28. That's strong. And then Harapans, food and district, food and river. Um, is considered a river. They can make a canal. Wow, nice. And they get runners, which um, train them at money when collecting curiosities. Okay. Otherwise, very weak, but pretty fast. It's kind of like a fast scout. Um, so for me, it would then be a oh, wait. We have more. Uh, we have the Egyptians, industry and district, producing industry. Okay, that's probably mostly just an industry this district. Um, less production costs. Nice. A pyramid. Maker's quarter. So also focused on maker's quarter again. And uh, ranged. Unit, yeah, right, with uh, with horses, of course. Then the Babylonians with science for research technology is interesting. So, the more you research, the more science you get. That sounds pretty strong. Food for researchers, also pretty nice. And science for farmers' quarters. That's a really weird building and probably really strong. Um, but I think I am potentially going for either the zoo or the Olmex. These have like a adjacent river bonus, but just faith. I don't know whether that's going to be that important. I think I'm going to take the Har Harapans here because we have a lot of rivers and this is going to be a... Um, thing that we keep for the next when we pick our next 
uh, culture, we will still retain this bonus. So we're going to take the Harapans and see what happens here. So yeah, these are legacy traits here. We will retain those. And uh, unique district, I think, is also going to stay. Yeah, and it is considered a river, so we can kind of extend the river network if we wanted to. All right, let's confirm that. So we have picked them. Now we also need to make a city. And I think I'm just going to make the city here. Can I even do that? Um, one second. I'm confused. I don't remember how this worked. Oh, okay. Next turn it will happen. Never mind then. So you guys then I guess can split off. Can I select two of those? Doesn't seem to be the case. So let's take two of those and split them off. In a group of two, I think they're going to be quite nice. Okay, and there's another sanctuary to plunder. Let's do that. It's going to give us, what, 40 food? Oh no, 10 food for now. I don't know. It gave us 20 here, even though it said 10 at first. So this guy is going to go north. So I, I don't have anybody going... Uh, west for now. So maybe let's go west with those guys. You might as well just uh, do some more hunting. There is an uh, automatic battle if you do not wish to fight those out, but I think it's quite, quite nice to do those. So here is how we go. Um, they are high and going into the river is going to be pretty bad, so we will let it come to us. Since it's just an animal, it will do so. Enemy units tend to not do that. They will stay back and try not to die. At least from my experience. I have played the uh, scenarios before. So uh, I have seen a little bit about that. How much food? 10 we have now. I think I also want to discover a bit more south here. Like there. So I know, I know a little bit about the game. We discovered something. Maybe? Or not? Why is it doing that? Okay, interesting. Ah, the challenges of a young civilization. It's hard keeping up with the neighbors when they have the wheel and you don't. Humankind learns quickly that everyone contributes. If you're terrified of wild animals, you can grow lentils or catch fish. Tribes settle towns. Towns develop markets, and markets begin the exchange of goods, services, and most important, rumors and hearsay. Beautiful. Um, I don't know why I did that. Uh, maybe because my mouse was at the corner of the screen. Where's my, where's my people? That's a very big map. So what would have been shown there is um, how the city develops, but oh well. Uh, I don't think I need to see the, that one for now. Ransack successful, population gain, all right. So uh, I think this is gonna be our capital here. I will be able to link some territories up. Let's make this, it's gonna be a bad spot though. Maybe let's make this a capital in one turn. The thing is, once the outpost is complete, now after choosing a culture, you can make a city. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna do that just a second later. Seriously, you don't want to walk just there? But you could, right? I mean, honestly, it's still faster, even stepping into the river. I don't understand this pathfinding, but I don't have to, right? Oh, a bear. Nice. I think I should be able to take the bear. So in case you had noticed, our units have been upgraded to runners now. So this is quite powerful. I mean, even though our units are pretty weak, um, getting a lot of units up front is going to be really good for getting a lot of units uh, this way now. Um, is this going to be a problem? Standing in the river is not that great. But, again, we should be strong enough. So, let's let's do that. 
can still hope that he's gonna stand down there. Yes, he does. Perfect. So first move them forward and then we're gonna attack. Yeah, nice. So we do not get food anymore and we can't uh, like extend our um, guys that way. But we did get some dust or no, actually it's probably money here. Sorry, <laughs> some more, some too much endless uh, in me here. All right, we have luxuries here, two next to each other, saffron. All right. Every luxury will increase the stability in cities, I think, and potentially have some other effects. So what are we going to do with those guys? Maybe this territory down here, all those mountains there. Over this way. And you guys... Come over here. Right, you wanted to go there. I don't really remember why, no. but... Let's go. Must have been a reason. Off we go. Oh, look. Another tribe. And they still have tribes, people. Can I beat those guys? I could potentially. But then again, I don't think it's going to be that useful. I did this in a previous game and it didn't really change anything. So might as well not do it. Going up there might be not that great of an op option because I think I can't continue anywhere from there. But let's see anyway. Yeah, there's no way down there. It's a nice territory here. Also, we found the sea. That's potentially quite good because then we can make a port. Uh, which is usually a good way to make money. Um, there's one guy that has moved... Oh, actually, that's the city. Um, you want to do something, though. Um, should I make the city here, then? I mean, I'm going to combine the regions, so that border's not going to be an issue. Let's, let's do that. That went instantly. Wow. Create your religion. Wow, that was oh, what that was fast. Um polytheism or shamanism? Influence on holy sites or faith from holy sites. You know what? From what I know, I think uh, influence is gonna be more important. And I think shamanism is just a nice thing to do, so let's choose that. We also got an era star for something? For oh population oh that was qu <laughs> that was quick, we already got that so I think you started with the goal to have ten and since we got so many already we already have this first star. We can also fight uh, battles down here which will give us stars. We can expand territories for stars, have dust um sorry money. I will make this mistake a couple of times. Research technologies and so on and building districts right. We should also select a technology now, and anything that is like good for rivers, I think, is going to be quite nice. And I also want something for horses. That's going to be important soon. Uh, horses um, for luxuries, for copper. Yeah, let's uh, have a look at that. So, what does this do? Artisans' quarter, luxury resource from the deposit it's built on. Let's get that. Also, here are horses. Let's get those as well. Um, I don't really care for cutting down trees. I don't think that's all that useful. Harbor. Uh, we don't have a seed quite yet. Uh, but this is going to be important. Copper. Let's also unlock that. Will give us a good spearman unit. Since our guys are quite weak, I think it's going to be quite nice having something like that. Also, this is going to be nice for fishing. For food on the river also quite important oh that's also food on the river huh we'll see about that later i mean i queued up quite some already so that's fine the city also wants to build something so i could either invest 26 turns building a stone ring thing and i don't think that's going to be all that good so first of all um what is very different in humankind is how food works so as you can see there in the middle part, at the bottom of the middle part, uh, as long as food is between 10 and 50, it is considered as plentiful and will have normal growth. Above 50, you will have abundance in food and will have double the growth. So right now we have plentiful and we get a certain number of food. 
but since um, the lower threshold is 10, there's no sense in having this population here working on food. So we might as well move it over because it still is plentiful. It does not affect our growth at all. Being able to go through things faster is very important. So that's just what we're going to do. Um, so this seems to be kind of like a repeatable thing you can do for getting some food. Um, but I'm not interested in that. I'm also not interested in building units because apparently creating units removes populations. Um, I don't want to build that yet, so I guess we have just one of three districts to build and we should select where we will do that. So how these work, districts, as you can see there in the like second section, resource exploitations. So a farmer district or farmer's quarter will only exploit food meaning if we put it here it will get the food but if we put it there it will actually remove one of the production and apparently also food for some weird reason here it doesn't even do anything funny um so as you can also see there's adjacency bonuses that i have not yet totally figured out let's just turn that on for a second and also this one yeah okay so you just get the adjacency bonuses from the the tiles there and do I want to sacrifice those to production I'm not quite sure because this city is already not that great in production that's tricky actually um, I think I will because I will have to expand somewhere and it's gonna be down there so unfortunately yeah here uh, we can also buy this out with money, since the culture we chose has buyout as well. But currently we don't really have that much anyway. So, another thing we can do, actually it's not yet possible because our outposts have not been finished. But next turn we should be able to do that and I will demonstrate that. I will not queue up more right now. I don't need this right now. So, yeah, let's end this turn. An unknown empire has chosen the Assyrians. All right. And we got a civics point. So uh, there's a civics system similar to how there was one in uh, Civilization VI, where um, you can spend those points on certain bonuses. Like, for example, I can choose here to go for um, customary laws or codified laws to change my I guess you would call this kind of like an ethics system but you're more towards I don't even remember how it's called it doesn't show here let's actually see that somewhere it's shown one second I might find it in a second or, or not there's a screen where you see it but uh, yeah like more logical thinking or more religious and uh, I don't quite know. I think this is more authoritarian and that's more egalitarian, perhaps. So, yeah. Or maybe this is the authoritarian, egalitarian. Never mind. But, yeah, you get that. This is kind of an influence thing um, where picking one puts you in a certain direction, ethics direction. And I think codified laws is something very great because you should always have your laws written down. And for founding myths, either natural right or divine mandate. Honestly, I couldn't care less. I think I will go natural right eventually, so that my rule is nothing to do with the gods, because I don't think that's how it should work. But uh, yeah, there we go. I think I will go for codified laws. Write those laws down. It will also do this one here. This is, I think, a very good... A bonus to have the attach outpost cost and absorb city costs is going to be lower and I think I will be able to show that what it does right now so looking at our outpost that has now completed there is this uh, link button here I can link this outpost to the city which combines the region in one big region and I'm totally going to do that it is going to cost us 20 influence it will transfer this unit of population in the outpost. Actually, there's two people in that outpost. No, wait. There's one. 
but we'll put that in the main city as well. So let's link that up. And you can see the borders now change there as well. One big thing. And uh, the region borders are now kind of very small. So it's one continuous thing. And I will do the same here because that's really an unfortunate border thing there. Uh, meaning also we should get an outpost here somewhere. Probably right by the river or by the ocean. Why not? The cost of new outposts uh, increased, by the way. So a new outpost now costs 60. It was more before, but that's just because of the era, I think. So that they don't expand too quickly. Um, so yeah, if we kind of link up those regions, maybe even that one as well. I think that's going to be quite nice. And in fact, I think you guys come up there and do just that. And yeah, you, you just continue exploring, I think. Ooh, another mammoth. At this point, it's not really all that useful to slay them anymore, so... I'm not sure whether I will be I will bother with that. Here is actually also not a bad spot for an outpost. The mountains are going to give us a lot of um, stuff. This is actually even better, right? Yeah, 16 food. Let's do that. We need to keep an eye out on our influence as well. Also, for some reason, this outpost didn't complete in that turn. Weird. We have idle units, so what should you guys do? Or guy, actually. I mean, it's a party of people. That's a lot of dry lands up here. Good for production. Um, let's just at least discover our own lands. I think that's the minimum we should do. Then you guys, I think you're on the way to go up. Going through the river will save you a lot of movement points. Or at least so it says in the game. Alright, that's uh, just some lots of uh, rivers down there. Okay, we have Empire Foundation. This is one of the events that unlocks civics. So they are unlocked by making certain choices, I guess. So... Yeah, I already did that, so I already chose my civic. And this screen, by the way, shows our kind of cultural influence. Once there's other empires around, we are going to have cultural influences on each other, uh, decided by the influence we produce. And you might know that from the civilization games, where you could kind of culture flip a city, meaning you can take it over. I mean, in Civ Five, it was more like... Um, a ways to win a tourist or, or a culture victory, but in Civ 6 you could actually take over a city peacefully, and this is the same mechanics, though I'm not quite sure how it works here yet. I have played around with it and not really understood it, so let's continue. We got ourselves a population in an outpost, that's great, that means we can now uh, also attach this one. Or we are oh, it's not adjacent to a city. That means we can't actually do that. Um, how much is an outpost now? 80. That's quite a lot. But I think we're going to let them stay here until that is the case. Armies are invading. I've received this message a couple of times the last time I played and I have no clue. I think it must be a bug because I'm not in enemy territory anywhere. So you guys, I guess, continue around here. Ooh, a sanctuary. Let's raid that for some quick, nice money. Not that I can use it for much right now. So since this city cannot be attached, um, I don't think I should attach this one as well. I think it is going to be a three region city then. And one of those can actually become another city. Potentially this one. It's not that great with rivers, so maybe that one then. Can kind of bridge the gap here. We'll see. You guys just continue walking in this direction. That's a lot of high mountains. Looks pretty cool. Um, the last time I played this, I went more towards this direction. I think I settled somewhere here in the... River Delta, I actually picked the same uh, culture, 
due to the rivers mostly. There's also so many rivers in this uh, map. I don't know whether it's always going to be the same. Also, why do I see this? But uh, yeah, too many rivers will make the choice of culture probably a bit redundant. I mean, you can always go to the coast and found uh, like Phoenicians, for example. That's always an option you have, but Given you have so many rivers, I think the Harapans are a great choice, regardless. Unless maybe you spawn in a desert or something in another map setting. Alright, we have moved around here a bit to discover more. Also, there's a, a deer here to, to slay, which I'm not sure I'm going to bother with. So we just finished our first district here and we have an event here. Blades of the Empire, as your horizons widen, your armies grow in lockstep with your ambitions. Now, with military power spread over several regiments, it is time to decide the nature of the soldiers who compose your armies. So we now have a new civic that is available to us. Um, instead, yeah, over here. That um, goes either towards, I think this is authoritarianism, but yeah, you can choose one of those. Whether it is conscripts that uh, makes your production cost of a unit lower or stronger units by hiring professional soldiers which I think is going to be where we are going going to be heading um can we attach something here actually yeah which one oh that one down there I I do not care about that one I think this one should be an own city from here actually um so there's only a limited number of cities you can create that are going to be directly controlled by you in, in some good way, you will have administrators here. Every city will be governed or some, of some sort by an administrator. So the number of administrators you have kind of limits how many um, cities you can have that are going to be producing a lot. So yeah, we're going to attach those together, but first we're going to need all that production to fill up. And eventually, I think I will buy that out. That means I should probably also spend some more time fighting because it's the best way to get money. And here we already have a good thing to kill for some money. And I think this is going to be better because that will most likely make it step into the water. Let's see here. Actually, you know what? We can probably do that even like, th like so. It was very kind of it to stand down there. Nice. Perfect. So we got some money. Nice. How much do we need? I think it was like 130 or so. 128. Yeah, 130. So like uh, two more mammoths. Give me more mammoths. Actually, one mammoth is almost enough. So these guys are done. You got the money from the pillage, right? Yeah. <coughs> So you just continue walking. Over this way. Cocoa. Or coffee. Come over here. Alright, so you're done. And you guys. You're already up there for claiming that region. That's fine. I wonder who's there. A matter of diplomacy. So we found an empire that has already chosen a culture. And uh, this is something I also have not quite understood yet. So in here, oh. I already received a treaty. I have a proposal. For you. They want to have um, only trade luxuries um, to be traded. Um, there's like different tiers of how well you are with these guys. And what is weird to me is I cannot propose anything. Even after like accepting or refusing that I can't propose anything and that's that's really weird to me so since those guys um, are cruel and risk-taking I'm not quite fond of them I think they're also into pillaging so maybe I don't want that you must be out of your mind so see now no I can't chance. choose anything here you. which is weird even if I reopen this in the right screen i can't propose anything and i don't know why that is so um obviously if we had some good treaty here for trade we could then trade some of our 
strategic or luxury resources, depending on our trade treaties. And we can, uh, you know, declare war, surprise war, propose ally alliance, and so on. Nothing all that interesting. But what I'm going to do is, since they're standing in our territory, goodbye. And they just ran away. All right, so the city needs to build something. And one of the things we could and potentially should build is the luxury deposit, because this is going to increase our city stability, which is already um, sinking a little bit because of the number of territories. I think the number of territories is counted which territories are linked to this city. So yeah, we will get what we will actually get here. Um, Stability and industry per obsidian in a percentage. That's actually pretty great. Also, we should do the same down here with the saffron for very high stability. And since stability influences our civics gain or society, what is it called? Yeah, I think civic points gain, something like that. Uh, I want to have this as high as possible. Also, we should potentially think about a different district and since we can now actually also build up here, this is what I'm going to do. Up here is a perfect place for an industrial district because it's going to give a lot of adjacency bonuses. So that's nice. Also, we have a new building available, which is going to give us more food from farmers, which I think is not that necessary. As you can see, we're now in abundance and we're actually at 57, so we don't even need this guy here. Combining regions is a great way to get, get food abundance, by the way. So this is not really a priority. I think I'm just going to go with more districts for now. And soon also for the stone rings. For religion purposes. Also, um, apparently one of our armies had to complete their movement. Ah, uh, those guys. All right. Culture chosen by an unknown empire. All right. We now have unlocked horse domic domestication. And that means I can now put... Oh, actually, it's not in this region. Never mind then. Can I buy this out yet? No, I cannot. You are here already. Again. This is slower, yeah. It's not that big of a deal. They might, like, go back there anyway. No, they don't. Interesting. Um, but I think our units are stronger. Yeah, they have scouts. So even if we attack from below, while we do take more damage, it's still gonna kill them. Yay! Don't come to our lands. We don't get money for that, but, you know, I don't want them to be in our lands anyway. Screw them. So where are you guys going? I guess eventually I will want this territory, so maybe go there. That's just where they came from, but oh well. And either we can do it here with the lakes, like somewhere around here. Actually, let's look at that. How much is this going to get us? We don't see it yet. Or at the water for some water access. Is this fishes? That's nice. We have two more idle armies, so one of those is here. And I don't quite know where I should go with those guys. Maybe let's go up this ridge here. Over this way. That's interesting. All right. And the other one... Yeah, I think you can explore more in this direction. More coffee. Let's go. Let's go. All right. So... I think this is a good time to stop this for now. Uh, I'm really enjoying this. I think it's going pretty great for us for now as well. Uh, we don't really have a way to compare how well we're doing as of right now. I think we can see the fame of these guys. Yeah, they still have owned it. Ah, oh, here actually. We're still winning. By quite a lot actually. So there's two others who have chosen their culture. Um, the orange ones, which apparently we have found, they have at least a single star, so they're probably going to choose a culture next turn as well. So yeah, I think we're doing quite alright. Um, yeah, if you have any suggestions or comments to what I'm doing wrong or what I could do differently, 
or just um, if you have something to say about this, please let me know in the comments. And with that, thank you very much for watching and see you next time. Bye.